Map services are the building blocks of the web applications that we create. In the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about two different techniques or patterns for publishing geographic information on the web. I will also discuss how the 9.3 release makes it easier for you to create more effective map services. Traditional map servers work with the notion of dynamic map services. In this pattern, when a user makes a request, the map server queries the database and dynamically generates an image file that is downloaded into your web browser. When you pan or zoom in again, the previous map is discarded, it is thrown away, and a new map image is created on the fly. Some of you are familiar with this pattern because this is how ArcIMS works. ArcGIS Server also supports the notion of cached map services. In this pattern, map images are not created on the fly. Instead, your web browser downloads map tiles which have been created in advance in your web server. Populating this map cache takes some time, but once you make this investment, your users benefit from highly scalable and performant applications. We introduced the concept of map caching in 9.2, but in 9.3, it gets much better. We created new tools so you, can, you have, so you can spend less time building this map cache. Also, you can partially update the map tiles now at 9.3. I'm really excited about map caching because in the past, we often had to make a decision, a choice, between beautiful maps and fast map services. Many of you may not be a geologist but I think you have to admit this is a beautiful map, isn't it? <laughs> now, I think so too. I think it's a beautiful map, but look at the performance of the application. When you cache your maps, there is really not a trade-off between the high quality of your maps and the performance of your web mapping applications. Map caching is really important, but it really doesn't obsolete dynamic map services. A lot of good work went into the 9.3 documentation so you can learn how to use these different patterns of or techniques to publish in maps on the web. Let me switch gears now and talk about building web applications on top of these RGI server services. If you have no programming skills, we have the out-of-the-box web mapping application for RGI server. If you are a developer, there are multiple SDKs that you can use. I will start with the .NET and Java SDKs the web ADFs. I thought a good idea was to just go through an application that one of you have created to showcase the web ADF. I want to thank GDV for allowing me to share their work with you. Have you ever called an insurance company asking for a home, a quote on your insurance on your home? This is what happens at the other side of the line. I'm logging in into Source Geo, GDB's enterprise GIS application. GDB is a German association of insurance companies. It represents over 450 of them. Every day, more than 15,000 GDB members access this enterprise application to create different types of reports, liability analysis, risk assessment, and so on. Here, I'm geocoding the location of a potential customer. Now, let me tell you something. Insurance companies know a lot about you, more than you think. Source Geo access over 60 terabytes of business information. Some of this information is stored in their enterprise Geo database, but they also make use of external web services. This topographic map is coming, for example, from the German Federal Agency for Mapping and Geodesy. This is a great example of a services-oriented architecture in action. This is something, a big idea or concept that you see in PowerPoint slides. But here you can see SOA in action. I'm running a report here, an environmental liability report. One of the big advantages of Source Geo is that it leverages advanced analytical capabilities from ArcGIS server. Source Geo is a great success story. It shows how organizations are using the geographic approach to make better decisions. It also shows how many of you are using the web ADF to deliver advanced GIS capabilities across entire organizations through easy-to-use web browser-based applications. Now, the web ADF SDK is the most complete and sophisticated environment for creating web applications on top of server. 
but many of you have asked us to simplify that process. Let me show you the new ArcGIS JavaScript API. In this website, I have a simple website that is displaying a few schools in my city. I want you to see this. I added here a simple map. It's a, a static map. It's just a JPEG file. I cannot zoom in or pan around. Let me show you how easily you can use the new JavaScript API to put a fully functional map into this application. OK, so step number one will be to author a map document, which I did. It's here. Step number two, publish your map document into ArcGIS server. Simply drag and drop. At 9.3, you can use the new ArcGIS services directory. It's a very simple website where you can list all the services that run on your ArcGIS server instance. Let me click on the service that we just created. Services directory has different view-ins, so you can explore the geography of your map service in different clients. I'm going to pick the ArcGIS JavaScript one. So this is the map that I just published. Now, how do I take this GIS map and I put it into my website? Because ArcGIS JavaScript applications are, are based on pure HTML and JavaScript, I can simply right-click on the web browser, view the source code, and copy the lines that really matter. There are 10 lines here that I am interested on. So I'm going to copy them. And now let's go back to the, our website. I'm going to open the source code of my website to replace this static image with a fully functional map. Here is the source code. Let me scroll down to the very bottom. And here you can see that I have a reference to the static image. I'm going to delete it. And I'm, I am going to copy the JavaScript code instead. That's it. Now I am going to save my HTML page. And I'm going to refresh my application. That's it. Now, this is just the beginning, of course. We can do mapping. But remember that this new lightweight API is not just about mapping. You can really invoke geoprocessing, geocoding geo services, and so on. But actually, there is more. Today, we are making an announcement. We are releasing the beta version of a new API, the Flex API. So now you can create rich internet applications on top of ArcGIS server. In this case, I have a map of San Diego. This is the convention center, the plenary session where you are. And here you have some of the restaurants that I like around in San Diego. Let me click on one of them. OK, wow, that was flexy. This is the website of this restaurant, Bondi. Uh, you can, of course, run different geoprocessing tools. In this case, I'm going to set my location here. And I'm going to run a network analysis here to calculate walking distance from my location. You can also see that all the different restaurants have been sorted by distance to my location. Now, you have seen many different SDKs today. We talked about the .NET and Java Web ADF, the JavaScript SDK or API, and also the Flex API. But remember that ArcGIS server services are based on standards. They are open. The developer opportunities on top of ArcGIS server do not end with these SDKs. You can literally use any programming environment to build applications on top of server. JavaScript, PHP, Ruby, Python. Here, I want to showcase an application that I built using Microsoft Silverlight. It's using the RESTful services from ArcGIS server. You can not only navigate, but you can also invoke different spatial queries. Here are some of the, uh, my favorite places here in, in France. I'm going to switch the background map. OK, so let's wrap up here. What we have seen here, basically two things. First, we talked about building effective map services. I made an emphasis on cached map services because I think they redefine the way we think about publishing geographic information on the web. We also talked about building web applications on top of ArcGIS server. Regardless of who you are, we have something for you for non-developers, for Java, .NET, JavaScript, Flex, but really any programming environment since all the web services are open and based on standards. Thank you very much.